Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where we have what I think is going to be a really fun activity today, another adventure. Uh, first of all, before we begin, I wanted to remind everyone that we have our two classes going, our water bath canning class and our pressure canning class. They are accessible through our bookstore. And then, of course, for this week only, we have our uh, book, 40 Plus Recipes Using Food Storage Ingredients, on sale for 20% off in the bookstore. And that was authored by the four Patch sisters, of which I am the firstborn. So that will be an exciting thing for you to pick up if you haven't already. So today we're going to do six pack hot dogs. <laughs> what are those? Well, that's a name I made up because um, it is a, it is a um, King Arthur recipe that I found while I'm, you know, I'm doing all of this research for the bread book that will be released at the end of April. And I came across this recipe and I just chuckled. I thought it looked so fun. It would be great for children or grandchildren. It would be great for us. And it's all about hot dogs done in a very special way, which we will get to in just a minute. But first I want to give you a little bit of history about Jim and me. Jim and I met when we were both studying for our PhD degrees. And Jim had been at it for a little while when I came to campus. And my very first class in statistics, he was in that class. And um, I was quite intimidated by him because he looked so smart. And I was a little bit afraid of statistics anyway. Turns out that we both ended up loving statistics. And uh, once I graduated, I taught statistics at the graduate level um, as a professor. But um, I had been through a recent divorce and Jim had been single for about 10 years. I was not there to do any dating. I was down on men and I didn't like Jim. I didn't like anybody uh, of the male persuasion. <laughs> And um, we started a class, or, or a, uh, we started a study group for our stats class. And I got to know him a little bit better. And he was just such a nice person, so kind. And, uh, but I still was not interested. I was a little bit hostile. And um, I wasn't giving my phone number or my address out to anyone. And one Saturday morning, he showed up at my apartment, and it made me so mad. I was just out of the shower. My hair was dripping wet. I had no makeup on at all. And um, he said he had something to um, show me. And so I sent him out back. I wasn't about to let him in my apartment. I sent him out back where there was a picnic table over a puddle and where I knew the mosquitoes were thick as could be. And Wyoming mosquitoes are huge. They're so big, the joke is that they have landing lights. And I figured the mosquitoes would drive him off. And so I just took my time getting my hair fixed and putting my makeup on. And when I went out there, he was still there. And he had written me a poem. And to this day, remembering that poem chokes me up because I could tell by his writing that poem that he had insight to who I really was, insight to my soul. And that started us off of, on our dating adventures, which was just a roller coaster anyway. Long story short, we got married and we were as poor as poor could be. N neither of us had anything. Um, and so we had to be very careful about the gro our grocery bill. I, um, I was working as an, a research assistant for a couple of professors. And um, Jim had a little job on the side as well. And we just, just had to scrape through. Well, one of the foods that we ate two, Jim, or three times a week, was it? At least three times a week. Was hot dogs. <laughs> because they were so inexpensive. And you know what? Um, you would think that we never wanted to taste another hot dog again. But we love hot dogs. And so when I saw this recipe in King Arthur, I reflected back to all of those memories. And I thought, this will be great fun. So we are going to do what King Arthur calls scallion sesame hot dog buns. Whew. And I'm just calling them six-pack hot dogs. So let's get to it. Now, this recipe um, is a for fun recipe. Um, but it, it, it well, well. Let's just do it, and then we can figure out what we're going to do with it after we're done. So we're going to first of all start off with a method uh, from Japan that is called tenjon. 
And I went to the internet to find out how to pronounce that correctly, and I probably just massacred it. Tangzhong, T-A-N-G-Z-H-O-N-G. And it is a method where we take part of the flour and the liquid from the recipe and we cook it. Um, and what happens that, to that is that the flour, the little bit of flour that is in this mixture is gelatinized and that allows it to absorb more moisture as we mix it in with the remaining ingredients. And the dough is soft and fluffy and it has a longer shelf life. Now in my research for my uh, book that's coming out in April, uh, one of the great big old thick books on bread baking that I got also features this same methodology, only he doesn't call it tengshan. He calls it scalding the flour. And so I tried that without even knowing about tengshan or any of the details behind it. And it makes quite a difference in the outcome of the dough. So we're going to get started right here. Now I have my scale and I have this little pan. I'm just going to put my scale right here and turn it on and zero it out. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to add um, 43 grams of water, uh, which is the same thing as three tablespoons. So I'm just going to see how well those two match up because I put tablespoons of water in here. 39, so I need just a little bit more because I am going by the weights given in the uh, recipe by King Arthur. So 43 grams of water. There's 43 grams of water. Zeroing the scale, and now 43 grams of milk. And this is whole milk. And I measured it out in tablespoons. It's also three tablespoons. And I'm quite shy of that. So 36. And I'm going to add more up to 43. 43. And then with the flour, we need 14 grams of King Arthur unbleached bread flour. So I'm zeroing the scale and I need 14 grams. All right, I measured, um, I measured out two tablespoons using a tablespoon measurement, and I have this much left. So you can see that measuring by weight gives a different outcome than measuring by volume. And so I, that is why I am measuring by weight. Okay, so now we're going to set the scale aside. And I'm just going to whisk this mi mixture up. And really, this is akin to making a roux, as if you were going to be making gravy or something. So when I put this over the heat, it will thicken up, and we're going to cook it until I go like this, and there are lines left in uh, the dough. Now we have, this is a butane stove, for those of you that may be joining us for the very first time. This is a little butane stove. Here's the canister of butane right here. Safe to use in your kitchen, but we do have a, um, what is this, Jim? That is a carbon monoxide detector, and I have to open windows. Yes, and we have to just open the back door just a little crack. I see it, but I'm turning it way, way down. All right, so I'm just going to stir this until it thickens up. It's going to take three to five minutes to do this. And I will bring you back when I can make the lines in the mixture as described in the recipe. And I'm going to put the link to this recipe in the, at the um, end of the video so you also can uh, read through it and do it. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, as you can see right here, this is thickened up. And as I put this through, the lines are showing. And so this is done. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and we're gonna set this aside. 
So here it is in the bottom of the bowl. And I'm going to add to this a half a cup of milk right away to cool it down. All right, we're gonna pull our scale out again. Put the Ancrochim bowl on here. And going to turn on the scale and make sure that it is zeroed out. And then I am going to need 300 grams of King Arthur bread flour. And I have that labeled right on the top. Bread flour, their bread flour is 12.7% um, protein, so it's very high protein. So I'm just gonna use this scoop, and we're gonna scoop until we get 300 grams. I don't need to fluff the flour or anything else because we're doing it by weight. There's 300 grams. Now we're just going to put in everything else. Two tablespoons of milk, dry milk powder. And I have a fourth of a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of salt going in. I have a tablespoon of instant yeast going in. And actually I can put this over here now. Um, an egg, one egg, bowl scraper, here's the roller, and I'm going to bring the roller to the center position and lock it in place. And we are going to mix. So we're going to mix and knead this, and I don't think I need to show that on camera because I've shown it on camera many times. Um, I will once again put the link to the video about mixing and kneading using stand mixers where I show both the KitchenAid and the Ankershim in terms of mixing and kneading. So we'll be back when this is completely kneaded and ready for the next step. There is the kneading. It's just about to finish up. Notice how it has picked up all of the flour and is in a nice cohesive ball. So it's nice and soft. I did have to add more flour um, don't ever hesitate to add a little bit additional flour or liquid because it is very dependent on the humidity of your kitchen and we've just been in a snowstorm all morning so I needed to add a little bit more flour. So here is this nice soft dough ball and um, I have this Cambro container. You can find this in our Amazon store if you're interested. And I'm just going to flatten this out. It does have measurements on the side, so it makes it easy. To, and I have this little rubber band that I move up and down so that I can help tell whether it's doubled or not. So we're going to let this get puffy it does not necessarily have to double in size, but it does have to get puffy. So we will be back probably in about 45 minutes or so. So see you then. All right, we're back and here comes the fun part. Notice that our dough is maybe not quite doubled, but it is very puffy. And so we're gonna go ahead and use it. I'm just going to sprinkle a light covering of flour right here. And I'm going to deflate it. So we need to find out how much we have. 
787. Hey Siri, what is 787 divided by 8? 787 divided by 8 is 98.375. Okay, so we want to um, cut this in about 8, not about, exactly, 8 pieces that are about 98 grams each. And we're going to use the scale to help us. Ninety-eight on the nose. It's not too bad. No. Okay. Now, what we need to do is shape these into a square that is about six inches by six inches. So I'm going to sprinkle a few little scallions on here, which are, I just used green onion tops. And then we're going to roll the dough around the hot dog. We'll come back when we have eight of these and I'll show you what comes next. All right, here we go. Now, I've not ever done this before, so we're going to try a couple of tools to see which works best. So each of these hot dogs is now covered with the dough, and I'm going to cut each one into six pieces. Oh, yes, by far, scissors are the best. So I want these to be as even as possible. So I'm just going to mark these, eyeball them and mark them. And then we want cut side up. Of course, these are going to have two cut sides. Okay, now. So, what the recipe shows is A little flour made like this. We have a six pack hot dog, six bites wrapped in a roll, and then uh, we're going to let these rise. And then we will do an egg wash and sprinkle with sesame seeds. So part of the fun on this would be to let, if you have children, to let your children make whatever design they wish with their six bites of hot dog. A design that I would be interested in is one like this. That would easily fit into a sandwich bag and be able to be taken for lunch. So I'm going to finish these up and then we'll come back when they are all on the trays. Well, here they are. <laughs> I had fun just like a kid. Um, I made mostly flowers, but I did two like this one. And then um, I also did a pyramid, makes a per six make a perfect pyramid. And so the next thing is to cover these and let them rise for about an hour. Then we'll be back when we do the egg wash and the sesame seeds on the top. So see you then. So these just finished rising and I've taken the dish towels, tea towels off the top and I'm doing a little egg wash. This is one egg mixed with a tablespoon of water and I'm just brushing everything. So next is to sprinkle these liberally with sesame seeds. So these are going to go into the oven 
and um, they will bake at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. And when they're done, we will bring you back and see the final results. These aren't the cutest things. Take a look at these. My goodness sake. Now, as I checked them, the hot dogs had popped out in a couple of them because the dough rising popped them out. And I just poked them right back in so they're all just fine. I'm going to remove them from this tray and let them cool on this wild rack. And then we will be back after they're cool enough to eat and we're going to have lunch. So we will see you in just a few minutes. Well, each of us has fixed our own lunch plates. This is Jim's with the cheese, of course. He's such a cheese guy. And I'll bet you that as soon as the video is off, he's going to take this cheese and put it all over the top and melt it in the microwave. How did I do, Jim? Oh, really close. <laughs> no, I, that was right on the money. And so he also has some brown mustard. And we both have some sauerkraut, and I have regular mustard. Now, these little things could be eaten with a fork. Or the thing that I really like about them is that you could just pick them up and dip them in whatever you would like to and just take a bite. That dough is wonderful, the bread, the bun, I guess now it is called. So the recipe is going to be below the uh, video. It's a King Arthur recipe and it is called, oh, I have to read it. Scallion sesame hot dog buns, or I just call them hot dogs, or six pack hot dogs. And uh, these would be great for us to take when we go on the trail for a quick and easy lunch to pack and eat in the car as we go. I had a um, difficult choice deciding whether to launch this video on Rose Red or over on our trail grazers where we focus on meals on the trail. But I decided to do it rose red because I think it had more implications. We've been doing so much bread lately. But I am going to put a note in the community over on um, Trail Grazers and give them a link to this video because it's applicable to that channel as well. So thank you so much for being with us. Remember our 40 plus recipes using home storage ingredients is on sale for 20% off through the end of the month. So thank you and um, it's good to have you join us. We appreciate it very much and we will see you with our next video.